We've done a lot of work with parallel line problems where if we've got two parallel lines cut by a transversal that you could look for maybe some alternate interior angles or some same side supplementary angles, something like this angle and this angle, but we don't always have enough information in the picture to solve for all the angles. So sometimes we'll draw an auxiliary line to help us out. So if we look at an example like number six, an auxiliary line is just an extra line we draw in the picture that lets us solve for the rest of the angles. So a lot of the times those, ang those lines are going to be parallel to lines we already have. So I see we've got these two parallel lines here based off of those arrows and I'm going to draw a line parallel to those that goes straight through G. So I'm going to move that up a little bit. So to say that that's parallel, I could just add an arrow anywhere on the line going in that same direction. Now when I'm looking at this, I notice a lot of things. I've got one pair of alternate interior angles right here. So if that angle down there is 56 degrees, this angle up here also should be 56 degrees. So that's one part of the angle G I'm looking for. So I know 56 degrees plus some other value is going to get me the measure of angle G. So I'm trying to do something with this 144 degrees. If I'm looking at this angle in here, well that's an acute angle so I don't think it's going to be 144 degrees. But if I, in my head, and you don't have to draw this on your paper, but I like to extend the lines to show me what kind of angles those are. And if I'm looking at those, just like in our picture above when we have those two green angles on the same side of the transversal, those are same side supplementary angles. So to figure out that red angle that I'm missing, I can take 180, subtract 144, and get 36 degrees. So that's what's going to go in this little corner right there. So 56 degrees plus 36 degrees will get me 92 degrees for the entire measure of angle G. Number seven, a very similar picture where I've got two parallel lines, but I notice they don't have a common transversal, just like in my past problem. It looks like this could be a transversal, but then it curves and goes off. So I'm going to draw another auxiliary line that's parallel to my given lines that goes through the vertex of that angle there. The reason I do that is because that might help me get some alternate interior angles or some same side supplementary angles. And I'm looking for angle I. So the first thing I notice is that these two angles right here should sum to 180 degrees because they form a linear pair. So 180 degrees minus 117 degrees gets me 63 degrees. So this right here is 63 degrees. And if I'm looking for those alternate interior angles again, I could trace out that same Z. And inside the corners of that Z are going to be those alternate interior angles. So if that's 63, this piece right here is 63 degrees as well. So I know angle I is going to be 63 degrees plus that other piece on the bottom that we haven't found yet. So I notice a similar thing here. This 129 degrees is a linear pair with the little piece right there. So I can do 180 minus 129 to get 51 degrees. So this small angle right here is 51 degrees, which means that this angle right here is 51 degrees as well. It's kind of hard to see because there's so much going on in the picture, but there's another set of alternate interior angles right there. So 63 plus 51 will get me my final answer as 114 degrees for measure of angle I.
for number eight, there's a couple of things I noticed before I even start. I noticed that I've got a triangle right here. So if I wanted to do something with the fact that the angles in a triangle should add up to 180, that might help me. And I've got two parallel lines. And they're cut by a common transversal this time. They've got this right here. So if I do that same thing where I trace out the Z, I've got alternate interior angles here and here. So right off the bat, we could say that C is 46 degrees. I'm going to mark that in my picture. Now it looks like we're stuck, so there's not much more we can do. If I'm trying to draw an auxiliary line, I'm trying to think of some way I can get to angle B there. So they give me this 94 for a reason. Let me extend that line through that 94 degrees. Now there's a couple things I notice. These two angles are vertical angles, so they're congruent, so this is 46 right here. But these two angles together should sum to 94 degrees. So if I subtract 46 from 94, I'll get 48 degrees as that missing piece up here. And anytime I have parallel lines, I'm always trying to look for some sort of relationship. The angles are either going to be supplementary or congruent. So if I again highlight the pair of alternate interior angles, I notice that B and that 48 degrees are alternate interior. So B is also going to be 48 degrees. And that's not the only way you could have solved that problem. I challenge you to look at that and see if there's something you can do with these supplementary angles right here that would help you out. Number nine. A lot going on in this picture. So before I start drawing my auxiliary lines, I look to see what I can figure out without doing any extra lines, because that's always going to add more to the picture that's going to make it harder to look at. So I notice in my head I just extend this so that I could try to see where alternate interior or supplementary angles are. And I notice that this 122 and this angle right here because these two lines are parallel, cut by this red transversal right here, that those have to be alternate interior as well, because they're on alternate sides of the transversal, but they're still within those parallel lines. So I could set 122 equal to D plus 72, and when I subtract 72 on both sides, I find that D is equal to 50 degrees. Now I notice I have another pair of parallel lines. These two arrows just means that where I see two arrows, those two lines are parallel. So I'm going to take my highlighter out again. And I notice that I've got another pair of alternate interior angles. That angle E right there and angle D. So if angle D is 50 degrees, angle E will be 50 degrees as well. number 10. So I've got this quadrilateral here and I want to work my way over to angle F. Now remember with parallel lines they're either going to be congruent to each other or supplementary. Just by looking at these two angles one's obtuse and one's acute so I know they're not going to be congruent to each other. These are on the same side of the transversal and they're within the parallel lines. So these are same side supplementary angles. So I could add them up and set them equal to 180 to solve for x. When I combine like terms I get 7x plus 5 equals 180. Subtract 5, subtract 5. I get 7x equals 175. And when I divide 7 on both sides I get x equals 25. When I plug that back in for each of these expressions, 
4 times 25 is 100, minus 2 is 98 degrees. 3 times 25 is 75, plus 7 is 82 degrees. Now I notice that with this transversal and these parallel lines, that 98 degrees is same side supplementary with this red angle right here. So if that top angle is 98, this has to be supplementary to it because they're on the same side of the transversal and they're within the parallel lines. Now we're pretty much done. We notice that this angle right here is a vertical angle to angle F, which means that they're congruent. So vertical angles are congruent. So if this over here is 82 degrees, the measure of angle F is also 82 degrees.